Thanks for staying with us. Now, barely a few hours to Christmas, and to some people, it doesn't really feel like Christmas, as this year is a special one. Now, today, we want to talk to businesses and have them share how Christmas Eve is like this year amidst COVID-19, juxtaposing it with sales and transactions from last year. Now, if you're a business person who would like to hear what you have to say, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So I'm going to bring in Dr. Marin Kebashara very soon, but I just wanted to hear quickly from your assessment in terms of um, um, maybe popular supermarkets or businesses that you would have been very busy, you know, driving around, coming, coming out and all of that. How has it been so compared far, to last year? Compared to last year. Mm -hmm. Of course, last year was busier, but this year is a bit on the low down, uh, down low mm -hmm. because um, um, number one, everybody knows there's no money. <laughs> and <laughs> we're all trying to, you know, stay safe and keep calm. And due to the fact that um, the supermarkets are also being careful about the number of people that go into the mar uh, supermarkets as well, they are, um, due to COVID um, protocols, it's a bit hectic. So people are, n nothing is really happening. Everybody mm. is tired. Okay, let me ask Maury. Mm -hmm. Maury, well, I last mean, year, you, you were in the U.S. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't in the U.S. last year. I was here. Okay, you were here I last was... year. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. So what, what was it like for you? To be honest, I feel like in as much as a lot of people made losses this mm. year, a lot of people also made profits. I know people mm. who like tripled their last year's income. You know, mm. it just depends on, I don't know what kind of business it is. Exactly. But there were gains, there were losses, but there were also a lot of gains. Gain. That's what I that's what I think. You know, some people yeah. even made so much gain. But because everybody's saying no money, no money, them to their following to say no money so that they can be humble, but they made money. They made so that they will not come and beg them for the money. <laughs> so I think like some people won and some people lost. Well, that's true, that's true. Um for me, I think what I just observed, you know, last year it was really, really tough coming to the studio. Exactly. Because especially on Legali Ayorindi, there was a lot of activity, Dirty December, Dirty December. a lot of concerts, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, it was back-to-back, event back-to-back and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any of those things are happening this year, Thank especially you. because of the restrictions and exactly. all of that, you know. So, um, I, 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 like, um, I, I agree with um, Maury Marie. that it depends on the business. Absolutely. It depends on what you're selling because mm -hmm. I know that people in the food market, like, on my way to work today, mm -hmm. On that Abraham, this way, you know, there's a place where they sell ram, I chickens. I, was I saw them. gigantic turkeys and chickens mm -hmm. being loaded into people's cars. So it mm -hmm. means that you know there will still be some businesses that would definitely thrive at this point. You know, yes, you absolutely. know, even well, you can't with, even compare it to what actually yes, happened last year. year. It would have been it's, worse because the traffic absolutely. was not so bad. It was actually moving. Yes, it was still compared a moving traffic. Year, compared to where it was stand was still. Last year it was a good It was a very bad move. gridlock. Yes, yeah, it was a very bad absolutely. one. So we want to talk to um, Dr. Mareni Kebasharo. Mm -hmm. She is a creative director, There We Are Options Limited, an interior design company. Mm -hmm. Although she trained as a medical doctor, her passion to initiate and enhance bonding mm -hmm. in spaces nudged her into the interior designing business. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Mareni Ke. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, we always love it when we when we have you on the show. So um, you heard our banter on mm -hmm. um, conversations around, you know, this year, comparing it to last year. Maybe let's just do a quick summary. You know, if you were to compare um, business for you in the interior space, because I know that when it comes to your kind of business, people want to always switch up things in their home when it comes to Christmas. They want to buy new throw pillows. They want to do mm -hmm. this. They want to change the wallpapers and all of that. So, but... Mm -hmm. Comparing this year to last year, how has business been for you? Uh, well, for me, interestingly, um, after the pandemic, yeah, when the lockdown started, when the pandemic started, um, I, of course, everybody we were all attending seminars. We were, you know, we're learning, we're doing a whole lot of things, and we we had 
high hopes, right? Um, but by the end of the lockdown, when they were easing up the lockdown, you know, I, I got to the period where I started to think that, Monica, how relevant is your business at this time? Mm -hmm. You know, because everybody started saying that people in the pharmaceutical business, people in the agro business are the ones that will make the money. You know, and for a moment, you know, I, I started getting a little afraid. You know, but um, honestly, for me, this year, um, I've never been as busy as I have been this year. Wow. Wow. Honestly, for me. I've never been, and, and, you know, for, for a moment, I actually thought, because when I was getting into that, you know, mood, you know, feeling really bad, I told myself, you know, I had to get a little spiritual. I told myself, okay, look here. During the lockdown, you've done your bit. You know, you can't play God here. Do your bit and leave the rest to God, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think what I focused on actually is my back end. You know, and asking myself that question, what problem are you solving? Because that's the only way you are relevant, really. So I have to ask myself, what problem are you solving in the interior space? You know, so what I've come to realize is that I think during the lockdown, people have come to realize that their space is very important for it to be, you know, um, comforting for them. So we saw a whole lot of people calling us. And it's so interesting that this year, since I started my business, mm -hmm. it's a time that I had to tell about two clients that we closed for the year. I'm sorry, I can't wow. take any more wow. projects. Wow. If I take on your project, wow. if you if you don't mind me handing over your site, probably in January or February, you know? And I still have them say, okay, maybe we'll wait. And I guess mm. it's simply because with the lockdown, people have come to realization that home must be home. Yeah. You know? You know, I think- Your home must be home, you know? Mm. So you have to, so looking at it from that perspective, honestly, I'll say that for me, Business has been fantastic this year. Fantastic. You know, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Honestly mm -hmm. speaking, as you're saying it now, it's actually dawning on me. Exactly. After all the stress that you go through outside, wearing nose masks, wearing this, everything is uncomfortable outside. You want to truly, you want to ambience. get into a home that you are so much in, at peace, you know. And I, I, I didn't think about this. Absolutely. So, I, I'm wearing it. I should come for Titan offering. <laughs> 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 oh, let me come to let me come to EC. Oh, okay, um, Mori, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Um, I feel like Marenke practically said what I said, you know, earlier mm -hmm. about how some businesses, you know, were more successful than they've ever been, and mm -hmm. um, this year than they've been like all the years coming. It just depends on the type of business um, mm -hmm. that you're doing. So I kind of agree with her. Okay. So, I mean, well, the same thing, I beg your pardon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask Veronica. So for um, yeah. for transactions, right? What was the what was yeah. the toughest challenge for you this year, mm -hmm. in terms of the, executing your project and all of that, meeting up with deadlines? What was the toughest part for business for you this year? You know, and if you want to go by um, the, the the topic of the day, you know, did you still have de um, what's it called uh, last minute transactions today being Christmas Eve? As I speak to you, okay, when I, I, I have to come back, I have to literally rush back home to be here, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm still trying to hand over a site. Wow. You know, I'm still trying. Yeah, I have a deadline. Um, I, I've spoken to two of my clients that I beg you, we cannot hand over in December. You have to give us, thank God, one of them is a corporate client. And we mentioned, please, next year. By the time you resume, I give you my word, by the third week in January, we'll hand over your site so that we can focus on the three sites that we have, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. So, but the toughest challenge for me now is actually the height and the prices of stuff, construction stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine us um, getting stuff like POP, like the ceiling, you know, like the um, ceiling treatment that you charge a client, um, let me take, for example, 5,000 per square meter, mm -hmm. right? And we get our workers, by the time we buy our materials and we pay for labor, mm -hmm. we actually used to do it for about 4,000 naira per square meter. Now, these are projects that are sealed. We have concluded. Clients are paid. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there's a hike in the in price of material. And mm -hmm. now to do the ceiling treatment for me is costing me 6,500 per square meter. Wow. Mm -hmm. For something I charge a client 5000 for. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are the challenges. There's been a hike in the price of materials, construction materials, that is, is just crazy. There are some of our clients that we have to go back to the table to tell them that, no, we have to do, we have to deal with this. We have to do something about this. So this, that's the greatest challenge that I have to deal with right now. 
Wow. Mm. <laughs> That's a serious challenge, though, because uh, I cannot, like yeah, because I cannot imagine, I can't imagine you having to, um, what's it called, to do a transaction um, where you where you run at a loss. Even with mm -hmm. this COVID matter, it's not even going to be funny. Do you understand? It's not going to be do funny. <laughs> The only no, interesting thing for us is that for the kind of business that I do, of course, we have the miscellaneous. Everybody knows that when you're doing construction or anything like renovations, there must be miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. You have between 2.5% to 5% of miscellaneous, mm -hmm. you know, which at the end of the project, usually you sit with your client and you let them know, okay, this is how we spent miscellaneous. And if there's any change, we give it back to the client. So this time we have the miscellaneous to kind of fall back on. So that's the sub as a buffer. But still, mm -hmm. still a challenge, if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, right. So, um, Maranike, hi. So, what about those that are, um, for other businesses, who are those that are not into the interior business space, for example, what kind of ex um, um, advice will you give to them, especially during this period of um, price hike and um, last minute shopping for things that, that, that they need to do in their businesses? What kind of advice could you give to them? Uh, okay, my advice actually to um, business owners is this. I think for whatever we do, mm -hmm. I believe that there's actually no business that you cannot scale. There's no business that cannot, you know, thrive. The one thing that you need to do first is ask yourself, whatever business that I'm doing, what problem am I solving? Mm -hmm. Because you must be a problem solver, you know, but whatever. I see people that are selling um, the Akamo, which is the pub, and the Akara. How do you start looking at this? Where do I want to? Who are my clientele? Who are my, who are my clients? That's the first thing. Who are my customers? Do you understand? How do I appeal to these customers? Where do they find me? How do I position myself? These are all the questions you need to ask yourself. How, what other things do I have to do to get myself ready to be able to give this and that to my clients? So these are the questions I ask myself. For example, I just started um, an, another interior course in hotel design, hotel and bedroom design. You know, I started in December. There's a need for, I started in November, sorry. This is a course that normally will take me 12 months, right? But I need to do it because of another project that I'm working towards. I should start second quarter next year, you know. And I'm doing a crash, a fast track program for this. It is very tedious for me. It is quite expensive, but it is me positioning myself in readiness for my clients. So people, you have to take your business seriously first. Because if you don't see your business as that, as that big business, you don't see where you're going, it's difficult to actually put in the work, to push, put in the money, to put in the time, and all of that into that business. So what do you put into the business? How do you position yourself? Do you understand? How do you, how, what are the things? Because you have to train yourself as well. You need to arm yourself ready to be able to give this value proposition to the client. Because if you want clients to pay for something, you have to ask yourself, what are they paying for? What problem am I solving for them? Mm -hmm. So these are the questions you need to ask. Because even if you're talking about the interior design business, mm -hmm. it's not just about me going into a space and just making it beautiful. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? There's so much more. I, I, I say that interior design for me is, a, is an art and it's an it's a science that impacts life. And because mm -hmm. I see it as a science that impacts life, mm -hmm. I, see, I see interior design differently. When I walk into a space, I look at color, I look at color psychology, how is it going to impact the people that live here? Do you understand? How do I try to give you a space that will that work question. absolutely for you? You know, so these are all the things I want to look at. So whatever business you do, you need to ask yourself, what problem am I solving? What is my value proposition mm -hmm. to the client that's going to pay for whatever service I'm rendering? Yeah. Okay. So um, I like the fact that you've talked about problem solving. Okay. A lot of businesses are going online and a lot of businesses are also go, um, sticking to the brick and mortar um, style of um, um, business. Do you think that the interior um, design space can be moved from the brick and mortar to online? <laughs> Absolutely, it can. Actually, it can. But the thing is, you still have to be there to make it happen. Mm. But you can. But yeah. But you can still transact with your client up until a point online until delivery. Yeah. You know. Mm. And actually, the the, yeah, we can put the artificial intelligence in space in, in place as well. You know, people sh should, we should be able to get to a point where I come online, you know, I was trying to set that up, where people come online and you go into my store and you're able to drag that yellow rug, put it in space, put that there, put that exactly. there and look at what it looks like. And if you like it, I can cost it I can do and it. let you have it, you know, so we can mm -hmm. actually get to that point. 
okay. the interior design business can actually get to that point. Okay, so I was going to ask, Mori, do you have a question or I should go ahead? I do, I have a okay, question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, that is going back to costing now, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, if if it happens and then there's a hike in prices um, of goods that you buy in the market and you've already given your clients a different price that miscellaneous doesn't cover. So mm. I want to know, do you return, do you refund, or do you bear the loss for hmm. um, the discrepancy? <laughs> well, my, for me, I actually bear the loss. I bear the loss because I feel that it is not professional for me to come back to a client and tell you that, uh, no, this is not doable. I, number one, I try to get creative. How do I ensure that I still give that client mm. what you know something very close to what I promised the client without mm. telling the client that the client has to pay? You know, I don't go back to clients. You know, I don't think it's right to go back to a client and tell the client that, okay, price has changed. Mm. Because that's the reason why the client is actually hiring us, really. You know, because they want to they, they want to save themselves from the headache of getting to some place or having somebody that will tell them that no, it is not this price, you know. So I actually bear the losses sometimes. Okay. For so business relationship actually. When you look at the bigger picture for business relationship and continuity. Okay, so the solution here there's a solution here, because I I just I need to get it straight. Is the solution here All right. buying cheaper um equipment? you know, but that is close to the original price or you buy the original thing that the client wants and then you take the no, entire... No, you can't buy something cheaper. You have to buy what the client wants. Okay, I just need buy it. what the client wants. Yeah, huh. yeah. that's important. Marenike, that's a lot of loss to, 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 to shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, 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 but trust me, but trust me very, very, it's very, it's, that's not so much to pay for business continuity with that same client. Hmm. I get you. I get your point. Yeah. So I was going to come back to COVID, right? And how it impacted yeah. designs. You understand? You know, because yeah. what the kind of design you would have thought about, for instance, somebody wants to switch up their living room space or whatever, the kind of design you would have thought about pre-COVID, I'm mm -hmm. sure it's completely different from the kind of designs you have in your head. Because outside of, um, what's it called, home decor, you do a lot of hotels, you do a lot of, uh, what's it called, um, public spaces, like social gatherings and all of that, mm. as part of what you do. So um, this year, w was the design, you know, was the design different in terms of, okay, everybody's trying to set up, you know, for maybe like Christmas or for New Year or whatever. How did you conceptualize those kinds of design to suit the times that we're at? Um, the design the design trend actually post-COVID is actually more of like an open plan design mm -hmm. and putting consideration in um, like placing workspaces in the home mm -hmm. in a really beautiful way, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I have you have your living room space and I try to carve a corner out where you can work, you know, and it doesn't look too, um, it looks nice. It blends into the living space, mm -hmm. you know, but you can actually sit down there comfortably and work. Then you now carve out a space because now I always look at when I carve out a living space, I carve out a space for the children as well, mm. because now we have the children with us most of the time. So when you're at home working, where do you want to place the children? So you want to give them a space as well. You want to give them their space, use colors that will be exciting for them, you know, furniture that is comfortable and very safe mm -hmm. for them. You know, so these are all the things that we put in in place when we're design, designing now. So that's a trend. So the trend for this year, 2020, 2021, is actually like open plan and having the workspace in the home. Okay, so when we come back, you're going to talk about social, social spaces. So for instance, restaurants that you, because I know you do some restaurants, you do some um, social um, um, buildings as well and corporate org organizations as well. So, but we'll take a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.